Well, welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today I want to go through some uh, 9.8 comics that I got burned on because I had uh, bought them during the pandemic. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't really have any negative feelings about uh, losing a little bit on a handful of comics. Um, if I want to make money, I'll just invest in the stock market pretty much. I don't really view, uh, you know, comic book collecting or investing as like a great money-making opportunity. There's no like big comic book collectors on the Forbes 400 list or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, I think my strategy back in 2018 or so it was, um, you know, I wanted to buy all these big key issues that I really loved as a kid in the super high grade 9.8. Hopefully I'd hold them for like 10 or 20 years and then I could sell them at the end for about the same amount that I paid for them and just kind of break even and enjoy that pride of ownership of having them. But uh, really, like, my expectations were, like, blown out of the water on a lot of those books that I bought uh, during that period. Like, I got uh, two Batman 423s and a 9.8. I, I have five Batman 423s ungraded, and one of them is a newsstand as well, and those are, like, they're going for so much more nowadays. Um, but I got four Incredible Hulk 340s and a 9.8. I got two Amazing Spider-Man 300s, two Amazing Spider-Man 316s, Two Batman Beyond number ones. Uh, I got a handful of like uncanny X-Men keys I bought back then for really good prices. So yeah, my expectations were like blown out of the water. So that it just doesn't make sense for me to really have any negative feelings about a comic book really. Um, yeah, because occasionally I see like some comments um, like, oh, he must be really depressed because the market's, you know, fallen so much and stuff like that. It's just not true at all. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it, it's worth mentioning probably that, you know, you don't just want to dive right into this 9.8 thing. I've made videos on this in the past. I should probably mention it way more, but, um, you know, you got to save money. Uh, you got to have a really good job. You got to work hard. Uh, I, I would absolutely recommend to have at least $20,000 in cash or stocks that you can access in like a day or two uh, before you would even think about dropping like over a thousand bucks on a comic book. Um, and all that takes a lot of time. Yeah, like it, anything worth doing pretty much is going to take five years at least to like to start to see the results. So yeah, I wouldn't really recommend getting into 9.8 comics at all unless you saved money for at least five years and you uh, have a really good job and you're able to cover your mortgage and your bills and all that quite easily. Then yeah, okay, you could think about getting in there on a, you know, a, a comic that's over a thousand dollars. Yeah, I should probably mention that a lot more to be honest but um, all right let's get into the list though uh, first one's a, a Jurassic Park number one in a 9.8 so I should have followed my own advice on this one I always say on the channel when there's a movie or a show you probably want to wait like 12 months after you're gonna get a way better deal on whatever comic is related to that movie or show there's countless examples of that uh, this is an example of that I think I grabbed this it might have been like a month or two after the uh, that like recent Jurassic Park movie um, was out of theater. I know my, my nephews really liked the movie, so I think that kind of blinded me a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I ended up getting in there on a Jurassic Park number one for $225. I've seen some auctions here in the last three months or so go under 100. Yeah, I think one was like 91 bucks or something like that. Um, there's one on eBay right now for $125. So this one's pretty much right around 100, so from 225 to 100. Uh, but you know what? If you're a big Jurassic Park fan, we're definitely about after 12 months from that movie, I think this one's kind of a great one. Yeah, there's 139 9.8s in a blue label. 34.1% is the 9.8 nine ratio. And you know, Jurassic Park, a pretty big brand. And if you like these movies, or maybe in the 90s, you just really love that Jurassic Park movie. You know, a Jurassic Park number one and a 9.8 for like 90 bucks or something, I think is a, is a pretty great value right now. Okay, next one, a Superman Batman annual number four. Yeah, this is kind of the uh, first full appearance of Batman Beyond in the DC continuity. Really cool cover. Yeah, I talked about this one recently on a price video, and that sale was at $140 that this one went for. Uh, so I grabbed mine during the pandemic for 250 bucks. Yeah, again, for me, I'm just a huge Batman Beyond fan, and I pretty much had all, at this point, I had all the Batman Beyond books that I wanted, except this one. And uh, so it was just one that I just kind of wanted to uh, pull the trigger on during the pandemic. 
Uh, it's a great 9.8 though, 151 9.8s, a one of 151. Yeah, kind of surprised over time that that kind of hasn't got up over 200 or 300 or so. 33.4% uh, the 9.8 ratio, which is a pretty decent ratio. Not amazing, but decent for um, you know, a book that's come out after the year 2000. So at that 140 recent price, it's a pretty solid fair value. I think if you like this one, uh, yeah, right around 140 is a price to aim for. Uh, next one, I brought it out. It's a Earth 2 number 19 in a 9.8. Yeah, just, uh, I think, uh, kind of got caught speculating on, a, on an Earth 2 19. Uh, this is the first appearance of Val Zod, who's uh, like the, the black Superman, I guess, and kind of getting your like Miles Morales vibes, but, you know, Superman uh, out of uh, Earth 2 19. I uh, thought it was a pretty good speculation, but anything that's somewhat speculative had, has just been really crushed since the uh, pandemic. So for this one to, um, it cooled down shortly after I bought it too. Yeah, I, I don't think I got the best price on it, but uh, I paid uh, $275. And uh, I think right now I'm pretty sure I saw an auction go for 140 something. Uh, so, you know, you wait in a stealthy auction, you might even be able to get this one near like 125 bucks or so, uh, maybe like 125 to 150, I would say, is probably the fair value now. If you go on eBay, you see this one, you know, 250 OBO, 300 OBO, like, you know, or even at a buy it now. So people are trying to get more for this one, but you wait in a stealthy auction. Uh, I think it goes probably right around $150 right now. Uh, decent 9.8, you know, now that it's cooled down, kind of a decent speculation. Although I probably, I don't know, I don't really even recommend right now to speculate at all because like some of those big key issues that are no-brainers have really come down in price. Like you just want to buy those. You don't really need to speculate right now. There's a lot of like good books at, at a solid prices of, you know, big key issues. But uh, 141, 9.8, so one of 141, not too bad. 42.3% is the 9.8 ratio. So uh, yeah, if you're looking to speculate on a, a Superman book, Earth 2, 19 is a pretty solid one, I think. Okay, next one's probably like my biggest, uh, you know, downfall from the pandemic. The one I got burned on the most. Uh, Annihilation Conquest, number six in a 9.8. So this one, I pretty much knew at the time I, I was overpaying. I had all the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm a big Guardians of the Galaxy fan. Like, I really love the movies, and they, I just got right into them. And uh, this was the one I didn't have, so I just kind of jumped in there. It was at a, on a, my comic shop. I bought this one for uh, $350 back then. Yeah, it was $349.99. And uh, so interesting on this one. I saw one recently sell on at Comic Link for $130, but there was one that sold on eBay where the pictures weren't as good, but it sold for $65. <laughs> so $350 to $65 on an Annihilation Conquest 6. Thoroughly owned on that one. But um, yeah, a decent 9.8 if you're a Guardians fan and uh, if you can get this one close to 100 bucks, I think. 248, 9.8s in a blue label, 48.9% is the 9.8 ratio. So the ratio at 48.9%, it's nowhere near as good as that Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. That one I, I much prefer. The ratio is like 23% or something. We just covered that one on, on a couple videos ago. Um, so 23% of all graded copies are 9.8s. Rather on this one, 48.9% of all graded copies are 9.8. The lower the better. Uh, so Guardians collectors have went after that Guardians number one over the Annihilation Conquest 6. And I think, yeah, the, the Guardians number one book has held in there way, way better than uh, Annihilation Conquest 6 uh, in the 9.8. Probably because it's just, yeah, tougher, high grade book. Uh, so Annihilation Conquest, let's call it right around 100 bucks right now if you want it. Um, you know, a decent one at, at current prices, but uh, one I uh, absolutely got thoroughly burned on. <laughs> um, okay, last one is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 95. This one is when uh, Jenica becomes a Ninja Turtle. And, um, you know, uh, this was a new comic book at the time, and I kind of got in there when it was pretty much a new book. And uh, it was, we were just getting into the pandemic, I think, when I was grabbing these. But it was kind of a combination of, you know, the pandemic heating things up, but just it being a new book. And a lot of times with a new book, it's similar to, like, the movies. Like, you want to wait at least a year, you're going to get a way better... Um, deal on a new comic book in a 9.8 rather than buying it like a month after it comes out when everyone's excited about it kind of thing. 
Uh, so TMNT 95, I purchased one for 100 bucks and another for 125. And um, I saw one sell for $60. I'm I want to say I didn't I didn't copy I didn't uh, write it down but I want to say I saw one go for like 48 bucks or something like that like under $50. So we'll call like the range on this one right now like 40 to 60 bucks if you want this one. Um uh, personally I would uh, recommend Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 51 which is the overall first appearance of Jenica. That one's a lot better. I think that's about 150 bucks, 170 bucks or 175 or so right now. Uh, that's a much better book than this one. Yeah, I just probably should have maybe just grabbed one. Of the, I, I, gra I bought two of them. Yeah, probably just should have grabbed one and, and kind of been done with it or been really patient on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I wasn't. Uh, there's 467 9.8s in a blue label. 81.8% is a 9.8 ratio. So this one, yeah, with how this ratio is turning out, like almost every single one is a 9.8 that's sent to CGC. This could probably just be one. You grab a you know, a raw copy for 20 bucks and, and just be happy with it. And, and that's it. Um, you know, it's not that tough of a 9.8 at all, which is probably why it, it really, you know, I'm pretty sure I saw that one go in the $40 ish range or the high forties. It was, um, yeah. So you could probably lay off a TMNT 95. If you want a 9.8 for a Janica, go for that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 51, which is a really cool one. That's a tougher in a 9.8, really cool cover. And the first overall appearance, I think that's, Absolutely the one to get for uh, Jenica fans out there. All right, uh, so yeah, just a short list of uh, some books I got burned on during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, you know, in a way, like it kind of makes me happy because I like learning lessons and, you know, lessons learned on these. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of hard when you're in the midst of a pandemic to, uh, especially when, you know, you're into this, uh, the 9.8 comics as much as I am to just not buy anything. And uh, yeah, most of the books I bought during the pandemic were under like $400. Most of them were like a hundred bucks or so. Like there's a few other books I bought that they were uh, like around a hundred or a little bit less, but I don't even really expect any kind of investment potential out of them anyways. And those are a little bit down, but you know, I bought them at a, under a hundred bucks to begin with anyway. But uh, these were sort of the ones that kind of stuck out where, uh, a pretty big fall in, in dollar amount. But luckily I didn't get out there and buy like, you know, a 3000 or $4,000 book or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you know what? Uh, lessons learned, no real negative feelings on my end or thoughts on uh, uh, for uh, comic books, to be honest. But uh, yeah, good to uh, share the lessons, I think, with everyone out there. And uh, hopefully we can learn from them and, and not overpay for 9.8. So that's pretty much what the channel's all about, just getting these great 9.8 comics at a good fair market value. Okay, we'll leave it at that though. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.